All right, well, now that the uh, siding repair, you'll uh, see in the video uh, just before this that I'll link uh, right up over here. Um, siding, as you can see, uh, that repair is well underway and got it up as, as far as I can. So now we're going to switch to this bug eaten uh, this carpenter ant uh, damage is what this is uh, from an improperly uh attached deck so let me turn the camera around we'll take a look at that okay well this is carpenter and and it's combined carpenter ant and termite damage i think um the termites shared the bottom part and the carpenter ants the top um Anyhow, uh, the deck, as you can see, was improperly attached. Just the ledger board uh, was just nailed to the side of the house. I put that bolt through years, years ago, but uh, the damage uh, was already done. They didn't flash when they put these things in. They just nailed them to the sides of the house. There was lots of lawsuits where people would be on the decks uh, having a, a party or, you know, whatever, and um, it would fall off because uh, it was just nailed to the side of the house and people would get uh, killed or uh, injured. So I'm going to take a chainsaw, um, my electric one there, and I'm probably going to cut about this far back on here and maybe into that second joist uh, over there because I'm going to replace this in like five foot uh, sections. Uh, and you know another concern there's there's two decks and the decks actually have to have to come down. I mean neither one of them is properly uh, attached. And probably only that end is holding up the entire deck. So, uh, but I, uh, I'm not worried about just taking down this one little section uh, so I can get out what's left of this and, and bang it out. And I will support it, uh, you know, just in case from the inside. Although the joists are resting on the end of the sill plate. They're resting on here. So this is doing nothing All right, tools, materials, supplies you're going to need. Uh, some sort of crowbar, pinch bar. You're going to need several different types. Uh, let's see, carpenter hammer, a smaller smaller hand hammer, um, some sort of, you know, sledge hammer. Um, this is just <laughs> what was convenient. Um, this is actually a wood splitting mall. Uh, level. Uh, I was using a chainsaw uh, because it was just easier for my plunge cuts and stuff. You know, I had to cut this section out. Now, you might not have a deck. You just might have a rim joist that's bad for whatever reason. But the chainsaw was handy for making a plunge cut and then getting down in there. Um, but you have to be careful of nails. You hit a nail and... And that chain is instantly in a split second. As soon as you see the sparks, it's dull. And then you're going to have to resharpen it or, or change it out. And also be very careful because that chainsaw will walk its, you know, it'll walk its way up there. You know, like th there's a place where I was coming in with it. And, uh, you know, that is a perfect opportunity for it to, you know, hit a knot and walk right out of there um i used it because now you might be able to use the multi-tool but the um you know these blades are they're 20 bucks and trying to get through um you know that you know a two by six like that man you're gonna eat it up in no time and it's really awkward to get in there with a recip saw uh, or to try to do a plunge cut with, with a circular saw. So, um, it's honestly the chainsaw whoosh right through it. Um, let's see, you're going to need an impact and these are the lag bolts I was using. Um, obviously the circular saw for cutting your rim joist, uh, bottle jack. And then you'll see in a second, I'll show you the, um, 
uh, Porta Power, um, which is actually better to use if you have that. But this will work. You just have to be careful what you're going to use in conjunction with screw jacks, which you want a magnetic level on so that you can uh, make sure it's it's plumb. Uh, speed square tape measure, uh, recip saw, um, cutoff wheel on a grinder is uh, very handy for knocking off um you know all the ends of nails um when you pull stuff out pull siding off whatever um you know zap 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 you can just knock those nails out with that instead of trying to pull them off so um uh, oh and this thing i've been pointing with uh and you see there's the air hose there it's handy to have um uh compressed air and a vacuum cleaner um, you know, vacuum up what you can and then blow out, blow out the rest. And, uh, that's pretty much it as far as all the, uh, the tools. Uh, and now I'll, uh, go down and show you the, uh, Porta Power. Yeah, Porta Power like this is really ideal to have. Um, and you can see this is a 10 ton uh if not the uh bottle jack that you saw uh that i just showed will work uh will work just fine as well all right got the deck uh supported out here with a jacks uh post because i'm gonna i'm gonna cut it uh let's see yeah this one and this one i'm actually going to cut as as well um which will open me up to that one and then i'll cut it here and then uh rip it away uh from the house to open it up up into here so i can uh be able to get enough of this first section of rim joist out and replaced and it gets some a little bit of siding up uh in its place so i can continue it down over here which like everywhere else there was no uh header flashing up over the over the window so i'll be making that right and uh that was another place water got in all right, got this cut made. Uh, there's no good way for me to have a tripod and do the cut, and uh, I don't feel like going through the trouble of strapping the GoPro uh, to my head and got that uh, cut through. I had to switch over to the uh, re recip saw. Um, brand new blade on the uh, brand new chain on the chainsaw, and all of a sudden saw sparks fly, and there's just a tip of a nail that uh it was a nail from here that bent <laughs> bent in of course it did you know shouldn't bend anything there but anyhow i think i saved it in time and i can sharpen it back up so i'm gonna go top side and cut this section out all right so trying not to win any uh darwin awards here because i've got a lot of you know i've got a deck up above me that is connected to this deck so i have i have downward pressure and then i have outward pressure and cutting these is you know making that low there's nothing tying it to this All right, that is uh, the carpenter ant colony close up right there. Yeah, 
You can see those carpenter ants kind of frozen in time right there. You know, like I said, when I saw that they were in here, which was way too late, and that's usually what it is, when they're swarming, they've already done all their damage. Um, uh, but anyhow, that must have been when I nuked them with um, whatever I put in a pump sprayer and killed them with. Um, but again, you know, the damage was already done. All right, I am going to go inside and try to knock this out from the inside. So if you can see me, um, I'm going to do that down <laughs> towards this way and get it all knocked out. But uh, I'm going to climb back up. Man, oh man. All right, got the first five feet or so. This is what uh, what you can see is uh, as far as how this uh, all happened in the first place. And look at how that is pulling away. Um, just nailed to the siding, no flashing. The flashing that you see is the flashing, like I said, that I put in. And I still have to figure out how I'm going to address this overall problem of that deck has to come down. Uh, I can't really do much more on this. I can fix this section here. Okay, so here's what we look like from the inside. I've got two jack posts and I've got a 4x4 uh, four four that uh, was just about the right size. I was able to bang into place. Uh, Ideally, the best thing to have is a porta power uh, with you know, extension uh, telescoping tubes and the uh, cylinder in in between, which I have. But a uh, check valve uh, blew out in it, so um, it's not holding the pressure. <laughs> you put, pump it up, and it pumps right back uh, into your arm. So, um, this is like, I think a 12 ton jack I have right here. Um, and it is centered underneath that plate. Uh, go easy jacking up. Um, you go more than really an eighth of an inch and you're going to start cracking. Um, all your drywall you're gonna pop out nails and you'll have a mess so you know just go easy with that and you can see there's you know i've got space in well i can't really get the camera in there but we'll look from the outside so what i'm about to do right now is just trace a line i've got this replacement section um, as close to vertical as possible, resting on the bottom edge. And uh, going to shave a little bit off the top because uh, you're never going to get this full piece uh, back in. Uh, you know, close to 40 years of downward pressure. Uh, even, if, even if the beam uh, that... Uh, uh, rim joist that hadn't been bug eaten and so on and so forth just the moisture uh evaporating out of it over time and all those tons of downward force it's going to compress anyhow so you're not going to get a full size uh rim joist back in there so it should be about a blade's worth i need to uh to take off and i'm just going to go ahead and trace uh, trace a line there uh, that I can follow and shave off shave off the edge and I'll chamfer uh, I'll chamfer the edge 
you know, that's going to be being tapped in uh, with a uh, belt sander. And then I'll uh, take some dry soap, you know, bar soap and run it down the edges. And that should help it tap into place. And here I am on the outside, obviously, one story up. And I have just uh, scratched the line on the inside of how much to trim off of this. Uh, it's just going to be like a blade's uh, thickness uh, off the top edge. And then I'll chamfer it. As like I said, you're never going to fit this uh, in. You would have to jack this thing up, jack up the this floor <laughs> and that. <laughs> <laughs> way too much to be able to try and get it in you can see there's unevenness now whether that's due to the edge of the board or the edge of the sill um i haven't put a straight edge on either to see where it is and quite honestly it it doesn't really matter so um i could probably tap that in a little bit more uh and this is uh about a six foot, what is it? It's uh, 77 and a half uh, inches that I'm gonna replace. And the rest is gonna have to wait for that deck to come off and this deck to come off. Um, this is probably our last day of straight warm weather. It's supposed to turn cold tonight and be a little cooler in the next few days. And then it'll bounce back up. But, you know, eventually it's going to start raining again, which it hasn't done in weeks. Uh, so um, I need to get this sealed in and closed, closed up and, uh, you know, then start working on getting this deck off. So let's get back to this uh, repair and I'm gonna pop this, pop this board out, and knock a little bit off his top edge, chamfer it, uh, soap it up, and we should be ready to tap it back in. All right, so here's the outside view, and you can see the uh, space it's been jacked up. Sorry about the neighbor with the uh, leaf blower. Nothing I can do about that. Between that and the airplanes and everything else so um you know i don't want to jack up any higher than that uh because it'll just pop sheetrock off and crack it and so on and so forth so anyhow i'm about to shave a little bit off the top edge of that uh replacement patch of rim joist and uh get it in here all right, got the uh, edge trimmed off the board here, and there's a little bit of the pencil mark there. So going to grab the uh, belt sander here, and I'm going to attempt with one hand to sh show a little bit of what I'm trying to do here. I just want to put a little, just a little chamfer uh and edge on this so it can get uh tipped up uh easily into place it'll kind of help guide it with with a little bit of angled edge and uh and then we'll put the uh rubber bar of soap on down this on both edges top and bottom so let's see here So, you get the picture here. I'm going to need to do this with two hands, but I just want to kind of round that, that edge off all the way down. Then we'll uh, soap it up, uh, this edge and this edge, and uh, should be ready to tap into place. Okay, actually went ahead and just chamfered all four leading edges, uh, top and bottom, and corners uh going all the way around um you know it only takes a few minutes no reason not to it's not gonna hurt and it most definitely um will 
will help. So, uh, grab a bar of soap and soap this up. And the uh, contacting surfaces it's going into. Okay, as you see, I got my bar of dial soap here. Now, ideally, I would be using uh, paraffin wax to uh to do this but i can't find i've got uh i've got giant cakes of that stuff and i cannot find it uh so anyhow i'm gonna just put a little bit on this uh chamfer on this leading edge actually i'm gonna put it on this is the bottom this will get uh flipped this is the top here so um i'll have the bottom kind of leading and then we'll tap in from the top and then it should just grab and go you know nice and easy um you know back and forth uh so i'm gonna uh soap up all these all these edges here and uh, next we'll be tapping it in and the other thing i want to show is since uh i'm working by myself uh to get this up and actually you should do this if you know if you got somebody helping you it helps to have this like up in place but um by myself i had to uh put some rope here to uh hook this and i used a four by four um ideally a six by six would have been um better but i had a four by four uh, pressure treated and this is you know what's being used to jack up and I did go across what one two three four five spans um, for the rest of it I will probably do one I'll probably just do four spans um, to jack up and and brace and you don't even really have to brace it in this case since you know my sill plate is fine and they're all resting on on that this is just gonna make it a little a little easier uh you know gives you that extra space and then you know after trimming this down um it's gonna help it compress right back into where it's been sitting for all these all these years but uh you know six by six would have been a lot for me to handle um by myself um up over my head and uh so you know you just put the loop put your two loops in hook one end and then hook the other end and um you know then you're basically in place and then all you have to do is is start jacking it up all right just about ready to tap this piece in i've got my uh wherever my joists are i went ahead and marked the ends of the, and that one of course is cut at the uh, at the end of it so uh i'm gonna get the camera up on the tripod and grab a hammer and start tapping this in okay got uh, all the edges uh soaked up uh <laughs> with my bar of dial soap but again i had uh wanted to do that with paraffin and i can't find it so anyhow uh i'm gonna hope this hammer is big enough to um heavy enough to, to tap it in if not of course i left the bigger one i need right behind the camera over there so anyhow let's uh let's see how this goes i'm gonna start in the middle ish and that'll be right here Well, attempt number one, you can see, is not going all that, all that well. I might need to go down to the end here and try and tap it in from there. Um, you can see, it's just kind of bouncing. So, let me slide down the end, and if I can get the end going in, um, then I should be able to work it up. Hammer. Uh, let's see. Alright, seem to go a little better there.
So, seems to be hitting something, bouncing off. Um, now, I could risk, I do have some long, long lag bolts. I could try and pull it in, and actually, it might need a lag bolt in it to keep it from, I think it's just the energy is bouncing it back out. So, uh, we're in down here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera and uh, grab a lag bolt and pull it in, probably down here since it's already in down here, and then maybe one up here uh, to, to hold it, because oh, I think it's just got, there's so much spring energy in this, it's going in and just knocking it right back out, so uh, that might be problem okay so that indeed was the problem I went ahead and first put one in uh, put a lag bolt in here I think these are what are these these are uh, quarter inch by five inch uh, with a t30 bit so just all that spring energy of this thing being you know six feet or so um, you know it was caught down in this end it had you know, it was squeezed up in there, but just banging it, you know, this thing is, you know, just absorbing and kicking back out that same energy. So, uh, brought it in with this one, and it just started pulling right in. Uh, you know, I was worried about, you know, putting too much stress, pulling it in, splitting the wood, but man, it just, it just came in nice and easy. Uh, so chamfering that edge, and, uh, cause you can see this is an unchamfered edge, and it is like razor sharp. And the the milled edge from the you know from the, the lumber yard, it is chamfered. Um, you know, it's got a rounded edge, but I you know helped it a bit more. You know, especially after cutting. Um, so anyhow, uh, yeah, I, I just kind of got going with it and didn't film it. So um, let's go ahead and pull it in some here. Uh, what do I want to pull in? Probably a bottom bottom top alternate a little bit and uh, it even taps in pretty easy now whoops so, there we go and I looked on the inside and it is it's touching problem is uh, the sill plates are kind of not <laughs> not all the way <laughs> straight um, uh, but the, the back side of this is touching the joist on the inside. So I don't want to pull on that too much. So you can see it pulling in there. So uh, I don't want to get carried away with it. So um, I'm going to finish off pulling these in here and then uh, go inside and let the uh, jack down and then take a look and see you know if this comes down and squeezes down anymore but just for the heck of it while the camera's running and I got this handy I might give this a little oh yeah yeah you can see it going in there I don't think it's gonna go in anymore down here. Uh, like I said, it's it's touching the edge of that, the end of that joint. Yeah, that's all the way here. It ain't going anywhere. Uh, that might go in some. And, uh, you know, it's okay. It's how it is. So, let me Climb up there, turn off the camera, get a few more of these in, and we'll go to the inside, and uh, I'll let this down. All right, jacks are out, and that's the that's a continue that's the old bad piece that still needs to come out there. So the new one stops there, it goes from the corner, the end all the way uh, to here. So. Um, so this is what I was saying earlier about how to get your get the board up in up in place. But I would use a six by six and do one less span. But uh, anyhow, uh, joists are back down on 
the sill plate. So you can go look at this from the outside and see what that looks like. All right, so we are all the way in. It is up against the end of the joists, uh, all the way from one end to the other. Um, I got a little off here, so I missed the, uh, I need to relocate that one there. Um, you know, it, it, it is all the way in, despite that there's a lip uh, right there, but you can look and see that that sill plate is, you know, that's not all the way out to the edge. Uh, you know, uh, flooring edges, I'm sure, are not all the way in, but, uh, you know, putting a level on this, it is, it is plumb. Um, and you can tell, you know, from that sound, <laughs> that has got full weight on it. That is, that is in compression. So, um, yay. It, uh, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't easy either. So I will still have to, I need to cut off, go around the corner, pull off some siding. Uh, and I just, I've got that one toenailed in there to kind of hold it, uh, in place to that rim joist, uh, cause it'll need to get, uh, screwed in from, from the end. And right here, I'll probably put, um, three just right in that, right in that gap just to hold it so it doesn't start to uh to push out because that is where i'll butt up my uh my next section which will probably be you know five feet or so but again all that has to wait until um i'll be closing this up sealing this up um it's going to be getting cold here still no uh, rain in sight but um um you know still need to uh need to get this kind of finished up need to get my siding up on both sides you know up to here run a long piece of siding down there and start it going up here and then try to do it in such a way that when i do put a deck back on because that's the, the deck has to come off again that one <laughs> then this one so i can continue the rest of the repair but now that the corner of the building is is taking some weight again on this rim joist, um, you know th this is kind of like the most critical. Your corners are the most critical spots, and I know I'm good down that corner. It's just uh, you know this in between, and only up uh, you know another ten feet or so, um, and then it's it's good after that. So the rest will just be sealing this up uh with the styrofoam and some siding and continuing it up from the bottom up around the window and up up to here okay so right here when i continue this repair again i'm ha just having to stop kind of for the winter and so i can tear down the rest of the deck and again you know the deck above but uh, anyhow i will be putting uh some sort of simpson tie plate uh to tie it together when i add keep adding the new sections of rim joist and then on the inside uh there are 90 degree uh Sim simpson brackets uh, so that I, because again, the joist is right there. So there's really nothing I can do that's going to positively lock the end of the joist since the seam is right there to the, uh, uh, the end of the joist that's, you know, coming out here. Um, so on the inside, I'll put a 90 degree, uh, a 90 degree bracket uh, joining my section of rim joist to the uh, floor joist uh, on the inside. Okay, when I continue this uh, repair and add a new section in here, I will be using two of these plates, uh, one here and one up above, and these screws, which are, well, it's upside down on there, but uh, you can see um, quarter inch 
uh, by inch and a half screws is what you use. So I'll have a plate here and I'll have a plate there. Um, I'll just have to be mindful of when uh, I put anything over this, when I layer over any, uh, well, the additional foam, um, siding. Uh, I will probably not continue the new deck out this far. It will probably stop um, over that door over there. Uh, so siding, um, any place I splice again down here with an continuing uh, to build this uh, section out of rib joist. Uh, so where a ledger goes over or siding, whatever, I will probably have, to, there's inevitably going to be um, a fastener from the outside layer that'll have to go in. So I'll have to probably drill holes uh, to accommodate that so that the fastener can make it all the way into the wood. Okay, on the inside, we'll use these 90 degree uh, Simpson brackets that'll get shoved up, you know, centered on there. Again, with the same screws as it says uh, on the plates. And there's the, the number for that. And so right here, that's the new section on this side. This is the old section here that is still bad. So I have to continue down uh, that direction, uh, replacing. You know, you can see there's daylight coming through uh, there. So right here is where the, uh, you know, the seam of the two uh, rim joists will meet right here when I continue the repair. So from the inside, I want them joined like this and then the two steel plates on the outside. And then I will put one of these um, up in the corner all the way down there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on rim joist replacement. And uh, in this case, it is a second story rim joist. So that made it uh, a little bit more challenging. And it was caused by uh, an improperly installed and improperly flashed uh, deck, which caused water to get back there. And uh, it just created a nice environment for uh, carpenter ants kind of came in from the top and some termites came up for, from the bottom and they, uh, uh, they lived and ate and danced and sang peacefully and joyfully, uh, together. So, uh, anyhow, if, uh, you enjoyed this video, found it, uh, helpful, useful, uh, entertaining, any or all of the above, go ahead and grab your rib joist pound and hammer and pound down on that like button, subscribe, comment, and share, and uh, I will see you on the next one. Thank you.